What's the money, but you finna hop in? Smoke me, bomb like Ben Laden. What's going on, world? It's your boy St. Uno back again for another episode of Taking L's Podcast. And today we got the one and only Bebop. Yep. <laughs> How you doing today, man? I'm doing good, man. Word. Just, uh, Came back from the gym and just uh, wanted to do some crafting. These are actually the ones I recently did. Okay. I uh, did this one last night for St. Patrick's Day. Ah. And then uh, I got Raftalia from Rising of the Shield Hero and then Agatha. What, what, what is Agatha from? I'm not familiar with that. Uh, actually from WandaVision. Okay, I've heard a lot about this. Yeah, See, I, this, I, I this, just revealed this, how out of the loop I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you're going to hear a lot about her yeah. once you watch it. Okay. They even got shirts ready at Box Lunch. <laughs> oh, man. And this is just like Baby Yoda, right? Yeah. Okay. Is that an actual real, like, Yoda's never like a baby in the... No, 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 no. This is just like a, a species of Yoda. Oh. Um, I think his name is Godu um, in the series. They, can, they revealed in season two. Okay. So but uh, they, everyone kept just calling Baby Yoda because we only known that one species called Yoda. Okay, so. but of course there's a whole race of that. So that, yeah. makes, that makes perfect sense. Um, okay. He's yeah. actually 50 years old of our age, though. Okay, so they age differently. Yeah. A lot longer. Um, basically, our, basically, you look at Earth and it's 365 days. But our 365 days ain't nothing compared to theirs like right. you looking at like earth versus like saturn or something like mm. their rotation is going to take a lot longer way bigger yeah okay so time literally moves different depending on yeah where you are aging and all that stuff that's crazy weird science weird science <laughs> so um this wasn't my first question but since you just kind of dive right into the i see tv plays like a big role in your um in your artwork do you have like a favorite or is that too tough um favorite because I live more of the retro of everything, like Super Nintendo and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, like, in Super Nintendo and, like, NES world, like, everything was, like, more of an 8-bit style. So, mm. that's something, like, I've always liked. And that's something that you kind of get into when you do these types of crafts. Yeah, I, I never thought about it like that. But when you said 8-bit, I was like, wow, this kind of, like, it's, like, live 8-bit. <laughs> yeah, so, like, I just, I like making things that exist that into an 8-bit art form. And so I got addicted to that. So w how I got started is um, my sister, my younger sister, she's in the military serving our forces. She's in the Navy. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make something for her that was like, not like I can go buy a Hallmark card or whatever. I just want to make something for her. Mm -hmm. So I went to a craft store, at Michael's, and they had these little things. I saw them. It was like little perler beads. So they had all these little variations of colors. And my sister's a big Doctor Who fan. Okay. So I made her a tiny little TARDIS, mm. and uh, and you know, I just ironed it up, and I started liking, like, crafting it. And after I started doing it, I started making little smaller things. So I started making, like, a Mega Man, a Luigi. Mm. Um, then I eventually just got addicted to doing it. And I made little 3D stands um, way back when, and I would have Pokemon. I, my goal, I would always have a goal every time I was crafting something. Right. Um like one run I had a Pokemon I was like I want to make every 3D stand all of them on a little Pokeball like all the way to 150 so oh, like, I wow. took, yeah I took the whole time just making a bunch of them and it was like amazing the original 150 yeah oh man yeah it was fun and crazy and then <laughs> like it was just a hobby for me yeah and it still is um but then 2020 happened we'll get back to that part. <laughs> yeah that, <laughs> I have a question for that so yeah, yeah. um <laughs> So, after I did 3D stands, I had a couple of friends. They're just like, you know, this would be really cool if you just, like, kind of showed off the festivals and stuff. So, and when then, is this that you got started, by the way? I just want to... Um, it's about six years ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I did it for, like, one or two years, and then everyone wanted me to, like, kind of... Like, you, people would really like this. So, I started bringing festivals, kind of hanging out with people, because, like, it would make more room for me to, like, craft more, because they're going to take space. Yeah. Um, and then I eventually just like thought about all these things I could really make. Um, I go to a lot. I go to a lot of metal shows. Mm -hmm. And so I had this thing where I would want to go make an art piece based on like a metal artist or whatever. Like um, one time I did something with Cradle of Filth, um, Butcher Babies. Um, I've seen Opeth. I have all the sign stuff that I have on my wall in oh, the wow. craft room. Um, 
and then I started wearing them as necklaces, kind of, kind of like doing my own thing. I was yeah, like, yeah. I'm That's at the cool. show, so eventually my first one that I started having an addiction to was like with Trivium. I went to go see Trivium at the old Masquerade. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where you bounce up and down, you worry about that uh, <laughs> floor <laughs> crash. <fall. laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, old Masquerade. Right. <laughs> So I went over there and just kind of meet and greet, and then Trivium signed, like, the logo I made. Mm. And then, like, I have that on my wall. And so, like, I started playing around with that. So I do more, I do music stuff. I started doing, like, some retro video game stuff. And then I eventually started doing, like, TV adaptations of things. Right. Um, I eventually I challenged myself to do more things. And one of the years I did was my mom is a huge Prince fan. My mom is as well. <laughs> right. So it was that year we were going to go see my sister in the Navy because she was uh, up in Virginia. And while we were up there, we were driving, Prince passed away. Mm, yeah, I remember that. And, like, it, it sucked. And then I want to make something wrong for Christmas. So, like, come around Christmas time, like, I challenged myself to, like, do, like, a real-life portrait of someone. I never – I did – Usually it was just animation right. of things or just something like Mario or Cartoony whatever. stuff, 8-bit stuff, yeah. So, like, I challenged myself, and I made, like, this huge Prince piece. Um, it was actually, like, in the house. And so I made that one for Christmas, and, like, I had a video of her, and she's just, like, bawling out, crying, mm. and, like, kissed the picture and all that. And I, had, I put music because I coordinated the hell out of her. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Son of the year right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I put on Purple Rain, like, the whole clip. Oh, thing. damn. So, like, I had I had mom, like, right over there, and, like, we had her closed eyes and walked all the way towards that room. Yeah. And, like, it was, like, all displayed right there. Wow. I'm sure that was it. You got to capture it. That's a, I got to see yeah, that. Yeah, I got, I got a video. I'll have to get you on that one. Yeah, I'm going to share that. I want to, like, drop that with this interview. That's crazy. Yeah. So, it really just started from, like, a passion place. Like, you said, making gifts for your loved ones and just, like making your own pieces and then people just telling you that like you're really good i want to buy this and yeah but it was really like with um like little eight bit stuff you see in like mario and Ninja turtles like any of that like they were already like pre-made right right so like it's just a matter of just like following the bits and making them accordingly and just have fun with it mm -hmm. but that's with the pokemon stuff as well but eventually i got to a point in like the second year i was just like i really just want to See if I can make my own thing, mm. like make something from scratch. So you mean they sold like pre, like pieces where you just kind of plug them in? Is that not like a pre-made? It's more like I can look at. It's like looking at a picture, but it's more of like the eight bit world. Like you like Scott Pilgrim and the stuff. Okay. And you see how everything's kind of bricked off. Oh. Every little brick is like a, a bead. Just a block. So you just like brick, 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 and ta da. And, like, it's cool to do that, but I ended up getting to a point where I was creatively, like, because it's not just me. There's a lot of people in the community that do this. Okay. And, like, when you're on Instagram and, like, you're doing your own thing and you're doing everyone else, I got to a point where I was just, like, I want to do something that, like, everyone else is not doing. I don't want to be part of, like everybody right <laughs> so like it was one of those like creative like sparks okay so like, when i started doing my custom stuff like for shows like the band stuff i was like it's my own thing it's my own like pattern like i'm drawing this off in my microsoft paint and like making my own pattern mm. of something and i was like i one of them was like rick and morty i did like a tiny rick like flying like this yeah and like it was awesome and then like i it went off from there. I did a, one run where I was just making everything in a Mario style, like flying like this. Yeah. And I had Rick, I had Baymax, I had like over a hundred of those things. And um, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> but eventually, it got another creative point where I was just like, I need to do something else. Because I was focused so much on make a little high flyers and stuff that's why i call them high flyers but eventually i say let me do something different and canvas didn't come around till like maybe like two three years ago okay because i was very self-conscious about painting because you know you have an idea i'm like oh man i see these painters i i'm not on that level and I'm right still, i'm still not really on that level but it's more of like i want to passionately do these things for fun right 
and eventually I ended up doing more shows because my main thing was like when I went to my first con, MomoCon, mm -hmm. like you have a self-consciousness about yourself, like, man, okay, I ain't shit, that type of thing. Yeah, we so are. Like, <laughs> but then like, you see little kids, they see your stuff and they're excited, they're like, oh, you're so cool and whatever, like, you're so, your self-confidence kind of goes up yeah. a little bit, right? Right. And then I eventually, I had, I was doing it for myself. I didn't care what anyone thought about it. I was doing it just for me. And it was more of like my creative stress out of things. Okay. And eventually having that confidence of people liking it, it made me more passionate to go out because I'm shy and keep to myself. Right. Like I don't like really going out, but it was also a way of challenging myself to go out more. Yeah. And even when I go to a show and I don't make a lot of money or anything, it's just like, well, I, at least I got to see people. Right. Um, I have a 10-year-old. And um, be able to have the abilities to take him to, like, a con and see, like, his favorite Power Rangers that he's watching. Because he was watching, like, Dino Charger and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I never, I never got to really go to a con growing up at right. all. It was more of, like, uh, you would hear friends go to a con and they tell you about it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But for me to do the art, it was kind of like, it was a gateway. I can bend. I have money to actually go, and I can go see people at the same time. Right. So it was kind of like a window of that. So first one, like I said, Momocon, I got to see Xavier Woods. This is okay. when, New, when New Day was, like, fresh. Okay. So, and you know Xavier Woods. He always yeah. goes to these shows. He's all about that. Right. So getting to see him, and I made um, New Day popsicles. Ah. Uh. Yeah, and so um, I gave those to him, and I took a picture with him. Nice. So I have one big piece in the house. Okay. Um, and that was one of those challenge things because, again, I told you, you can make the Mario stuff and stuff, and, like, it's pretty small or whatever. But right. I wanted to – I ended up challenging one to make big stuff, and this was before canvases because I was afraid of the old canvas game. Right. And um, I have in the house a 40 by 30 Mario map for World 1 and Super Mario Brothers 3. Oh, yeah. They that first map. Yeah. It you made the whole map. Yeah. 30. <laughs> we got to get that on camera. Yeah. <laughs> I might bring it out after, like, we get close to the end of the interview. Okay, definitely. Um, it's 30, over 30,000 beads. So you you have, like, a rough remembering of, like, how many... East, I actually have like a mental math about because I started doing canvases for right. two years. I had a mental measurement math about bead to here to here, like this one. This is eighty-one beads across mm. and one hundred and three beads in height. So the twelve by twelve this is about sixty-one, sixty-one. Damn. Yeah. So I started playing a little measurements with that. And that's how, like, when I would craft something in the computer, I have, like, it shows the pixel, like, little by little. I can do the measurement from there and have an idea of what, how big it, I can do for the canvas before I even get started. Okay, so you draw up on the, like, you said Microsoft Paint first? Yeah, because, like, the bigger I make the piece, the more detail you can work with. Mm -hmm. So I'm usually trying to go for, like, a 16 by 20 on the default. Okay. Yeah, because I was going to ask, so are you, like, a... You, you you didn't start off as like a painter or anything, right? No. Cause I'm just looking at like all of this is just, um, like, I was so afraid of doing the craft thing, and then I was like, fuck it, I'll see, let's go, what on with here? And this is the painting thing, and I kept comparing myself like anyone would, and just like, fuck it, if I can do it and someone likes it, I I can care less. I just did start doing solid colors. Yeah. I would make a piece and just do solid color of it and just like kind of draw off the name or whatever and it was like I gotta start somewhere yeah you know? Cause I'm just I just I'm looking at like the shading and like her and stuff it's like this seems like like an oh, artist yeah. um background. I have this is my favorite style when I make characters is like a noir style okay I, I, I just like the idea of like a black and white scale yeah so like um when she got introduced in the show um not to spoil anything like there's series <laughs> of events in the show like they kind of play out tv sequences so like like black and white style like andy griffith show that type of stuff so they right. were in that type of aspect so in one of the sequences with her reveal she was in a black and white style it's like you know and that's the look that she gives mm. um and so i was like i want to make that yeah it's probably a, a memorable moment i gotta look out for that 
So, um, get back to my napkin notes here. Um, so yeah, I was gonna ask if you were artists as a as a kid, but I guess you already answered that. But so like, what were you into really growing up? And stuff? Um, actually, as a kid, it kind of syncs up with how why I'm so passionate about doing stuff now. Right. Um, I I grew up with um, both my parents, obviously, and my dad wasn't really passionate about you know having that geeky kid or whatever. Okay. You know. He's that, you know, alpha dad about stuff. I'm like, you need to get into football. He's like sports and stuff, yeah. (laughs) Right. So, like, at a point, I was doing my drawings, and I was really liking to do it. But eventually, I got something to grade it down from him Mm. that eventually I just stopped completely. And so over the years, you know, just working, grinding, going to school, all the other stuff, later on in life, after when I did that thing for my sister, it, like, got that spark back right it was just a little spark and so like i'm doing this for fun but i'm also like getting that creative juice that i've always had in the back of my mind back right so like every day i'm always be able to get that groove that i love and i'm also passionate about like having the idea of having stuff that people like and they have them in their home Mm -hmm. makes me happy yeah that's awesome i mean yeah because it's like you don't let you know, parents, they have the best intentions at times, but they always, at the end of the day, it's your life, right? So you got to yeah. always know what's best for you. And the fact that you were able to, like, naturally come back into your creative flow is, is good. And I think it's inspiring because a lot of people may be too afraid to even ever pick that stuff back up. And I think it, it definitely helps to have a creative and it's outlet. A, and you got to keep in mind, this is, like, a weird thing. A lot of people didn't even do, like, these beads and then do a canvas. No, yeah. It was just something I came up with and like a like a small bit of people will do it now like there's a lot of people in the community that, that do this now yeah you i remember you mentioned there's a community i was like there's a community because you're the only when i saw this i was like i've never seen this before but i guess you would know more like of the whole world involved there's but. not a, there's not even really a lot of um black perler artists in the community there's a few okay um legendary creations um that's his instagram he he does more of the retro stuff um he does some like tissue boxes and a bunch of stuff. He like he's really amazing. I would check his stuff out too. Okay. Um, there's a uh, one bead artist. She's a black supporter, mm-hmm. and uh, it's Rhonda Beads, and she makes stuff. Um, she's been doing more of um, Black Lives Matter like stuff. Like she's really into like doing stuff for people. Right. So I really like her content too. Okay. So like I said, there's a community, um, a part of it. Okay, yeah, I was going to ask if you had any inspiration. So those are kind of like two people yeah, that you so like to. Yeah, so like me getting into it, and I would see other people on Instagram back in the day, and it would inspire. I was like, oh, this stuff's really cool. But at the same time, it was a double-edged sword because there's something, if I really wanted to make it, I was one of those people like, I don't want to make anything I've seen. Yeah. So when I would make, you like, I make this and I see someone do it, I'm like, damn it. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, that's almost impossible. These, I mean, there's always going to be it is, somebody. It is impossible. I have to <laughs> let that some, go. Yeah, yeah. But... It's just more of, like, my thing, like, I want to make something that hasn't been seen or hasn't been created. That's also kind of the reason why, like, making my own stuff is so great. Mm-hmm. It's, like, I'm making something that has never been made in that in this world. So, yeah. And like you said, you got into the whole canvassing and painting and stuff as well. So you you definitely got your own. And he, he, he patched up the pants as well. Uh, he doesn't sell clothes. This I is asked my, him if he uh, did. This is my addiction. Um... <laughs> I want some overalls. Yeah. <laughs> so I taught these were just plain black overalls and like every time I go to shows I like to collect patches. Okay. Um, I used to try to do decals and I'm like, what am I gonna do with decals? I'm not putting it all over my car. Yeah. So <laughs> I have a few. Okay. Um so I just started collecting patches. This and I do themed ones for my clothes. This is my Sculverolls. Sculverall <laughs> You need to sell clothes, man. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Yeah. So I want the first pair of Sculverolls that are available for purchase. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, I have a couple of vests, and I have, like, different themed ones. Like, I have a red and black vest that looks bloody, so that's my horror-themed, like, vest. And okay. then, like, I have one jacket that's basically, I call it my con jacket. It's something I recently did. So mm. I have a bunch of, like, anime stuff that I really like all over, like, this jacket. Okay. Yeah, anime is a big. I don't, did you ever? I think you like evaded my question of what's your favorite show. Cause I was trying to remember like, what did he answer with the favorite question? Oh, favorite show. Oh, was. Favorite show? Yeah. Oh my God, that, that <laughs> is that too bad. hard? That um, I see. Growing up, I was passionately about Ninja Turtles. Okay. 
um, that's one of the main things I was trying to do, like, when I first started. And um, I actually have a big piece as well in Ninja Turtles. I've never seen that on Instagram. That's going to appear at uh, Huntsville Expo, um, April 9th through the 11th. Okay. Um, you want to talk about that? Plug that at all? Huntsville Expo? I didn't know about that. It sounds pretty. Yeah. Um, I will, you check it out. There's actually going to be a couple of guests over there. Um, there's some pro wrestlers, Darby Allen and um, Sammy Guevara from AEW that's going to be there. Okay. Um, some of the cast from Supernatural are going to be there. Um, Tom, let's see. Um, Jason David Frank, uh, Green Ranger, he's going to be there. Okay. So uh, if y'all have the chance to check out Huntsville Expo, I would recommend going. It's going to be fun. Yeah. How far is that a drive from Atlanta? Not, not too bad, right? Um, No. It's just going into like, the city of Huntsville, Alabama. Okay. Yeah. So it's not too far. Yeah. So April 9th, if you're down. You know, come check out Bead Bop, get some, and everybody else, of course, but, yeah. So, what advice would you give to someone who wants to make a living selling art, or just make any money at all selling art? Well, I don't, I haven't done this as, like, making a living, it's just, again, it's still really just a hobby. Right. Um, I would love to get to a point to, like, I guess, stream and all this other stuff with it, but I, it's more of, like, I'm still shy about, like, really being on camera. Okay, so you're not really too serious about it. You're kind of just le I need, letting it go. I want to get to a point where I can, but okay. right now it's just like I'm just enjoying myself, like the venturing out with everybody. Um, eventually, I need to get the tools to like do streaming because apparently a lot of people By like streaming. I don't know. What you, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know what you mean. Um, just like Twitch, like people like just watching stuff. Apparently, a lot of people like watching like think things being created oh so that's what i thought but i was like you can't be talking about just streaming yeah, yeah. um <laughs> so people like to see the whole artist like, just process. See the process yeah. like, getting to the end so okay. like it's something i was like well if people like to see that i would like and eventually i'll get down to get that done yeah so okay cool well yeah just taking the day at a time not mad at that what um what was your okay yeah i think we briefly touched on this what was your uh, biggest L in uh, 2020, and how did you recover from it <laughs> in terms of, I guess, making art or just life in general? Okay. <laughs> it's not, it's more of like I didn't stop in 2020, but I'm st currently dealing with the consequences of 2020. We all are. Because <laughs> um, I saw that, I'm just like, well, I'm just going to keep crafting at home. But the thing was, I had all these cons and stuff planned last year, mm -hmm. and that's an easy way of me getting rid of some of it. Oh, yeah. So, when everything kind of stops, it's like, I had my son, we were, he was getting into baseball, and we we're almost getting ready to do playoffs and stuff and get ready to actually play. Canceled. Hmm. And I had a con in that same month. Um, canceled. And like every one of them got delayed. So all the cons I had last year got delayed to this year. Right. So everything I was creating, because I like prepping for shows. Yeah. And don't have it. All right. I'll just put it back in my stock. Yeah. Canceled. All right. And then I eventually like, I don't know how to make something for a show, because if it gets delayed again, I'm going to lose it. Yeah. So I eventually, um, on my Facebook, I just asked people, like, we would have a theme thing for the month. Um, I had a Disney month. I made a bunch of Disney stuff. <laughs> I had a, I had, it was a Disney plus month, really, because I made X month. I had X-Men stuff. I okay. made Rogue. I made all this cool stuff. Oh, yeah. That's, that's better than just regular Disney. <laughs> yeah. So, actually, this month was more of like a women's history month. Okay. So, I made Agatha. I made her. Um, after this, I'm going to work on Winry from Full Metal Alchemist. Okay. Because that was another piece I made. Yeah. Um, so, because of all that happening, I didn't stop, and I usually like crafting every day. That's good. So, it went from, I have, like, maybe two containers and a half full of content to six containers, and then things on the side. <laughs> yeah. And then I found another container, and I was <laughs> like, oh, my God, I actually have to stop. No. So, because I it went, I was like, if I keep going in the pace that I want to keep going, I'm not going to have room to take it out to the car, because yeah. I filled up a whole expedition yeah. full of this. Damn. 
So I was like, if I can't even fit all of it in an expedition, I probably need to stop. You could just like, <laughs> <laughs> so did you stop? Like I, it was, it's more of like, I would just take time off to stop crafting. Cause it was more like I go to work, I come home, I would find something on Netflix or really just music. Yeah. And, um, I would just craft and music is mostly, mm. Um, the last concert I went to was um, Raphael Sadiq. Okay. Out of all the metal stuff that I do. Yeah, I was, I was expecting a metal person right. that had no so, idea like, who my was. Mom, <laughs> So my mom got me tickets to see Raphael Sadiq. Right. And I think it was at the Tabernacle. Okay. And that was in February, and then that was the last show. Yeah. And I was like, out of all the metal shows <laughs> that I went to... How in the world did Raphael Sadiq the, the and, last. The, and the last song being Anniversary <laughs> <laughs> be like, the last Did you come dressed like this too? Yeah, I didn't <laughs> care. <laughs> You're like, fuck it. <laughs> I'm doing my thing. Go ahead. Yeah, so like, it was just weird. Okay, did you go for your mom pretty much, basically? No, nah, she did that for me from like a birthday type of thing. Okay, that's sweet. So. I guess. Well, yeah. Well, damn. So, I mean... Have you picked back up or like picking, making, making art as regularly as you want to, or are you still kind of like? Um, I picked it up a little bit, but I'm recently like trying to balance off doing my crafting. Um, my friend got me a little wood burner. I want to experiment with that. That's probably another venture I want to do is like do some pixel art via wood burning. I have no idea what wood burning is. So basically, you could take a piece of wood, like just a square piece of wood or any type of piece of wood. And it's like a pencil, but it just burns in temperature, depending on the burns, depending on the shade. Mm -hmm. Oh, like okay. Shave it down. So I want to play around with that and draw stuff on there. Because if you do pixel art in just like basically in a wood style, it'd be kind of cool. So yeah. it's just something I want to experiment with it. That sounds pretty advanced. You have like very creative, natural arts and crafts, like. You know, like, uh, is your brain... I, I'm surprised you didn't do any of this stuff, like, as a kid, like... Because <laughs> it I seems know. like... Uh, the funny thing is, this is, like, I, whenever I go to shows, everyone talks about, like, oh, yeah, I used to do that as a kid. I was like, it would have been nice if I got this. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> you're, like, you haven't been doing this your whole life? Like, really? Like. But I think what got me is that it was one of the other reasons why it felt so great to make my own thing. Yeah. Is that, like, we would have other vendors at the show, like, maybe two or three of them do the same kind of craft, but they just do stuff from the games. Yeah. And I'm doing my own thing, right? Mm -hmm. So they were like, oh, yeah, these are really cool, but those guys got nothing on you. And, like, I don't have an ego, but I was like, oh, please don't tell me that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have an ego and stuff. I'm like, man, it's, oof. Yeah. Kind of had that blush moment. I was like, shit, don't nope. talk to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I might do it. Yeah. That's what's up, man. So, um, what's your, what what do people have to look out for in, in 2021 and beyond from Bebop? That's the, um, that's the beauty of it is that I, <laughs> every month and every week, I never know what I'm really making because I'll have one idea when I'm at work and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do that. And I get home, you complain completely something else <laughs> so and that's why i ended up having people on facebook like give me suggestions on stuff because yeah it was, was kind of cool because if i'd start doing stuff myself it would be more of like focus more on music yeah um and maybe just stuff i've never done before um if i do stuff like from a game the beauty about doing a canvas is that like i can just go crazy on a canvas so i can do like a Mega Man piece I did one last year. I had a Mega Man piece in Zero, like when he was rescuing from the first game, and then Vile was in the front, and like I just did a like crazy little background to it, yeah. so it had a little variation to it. Yeah. Do you ever find yourself making like more popular characters just because you think they're, um, or do you just kind of stick to what you want to do? Uh, it's it's kind of half because one, I don't make stuff I've never watched. Okay. Um, anything I've ever created is nothing like those are things I watch and like that is a good example someone suggested this because I did a little competition for Women's History Month of that and that was that one so I yeah. ended up watching the anime okay. and I really liked the anime and then I started crafting it and see what I wanted to do 
to okay. get the passion and the look of the character from the show. Word. Well, yeah, man. You definitely have, like, a unique presence. Of, from the art to the way you present yourself, um, like, how do you, like, is that natural? Or, like, or what do you, what value do you place on being just, like, authentically you? Um, I always grew up, I guess, different from, like, the norm as far as, like, what people see and portray um, any person of color is that you we would get stereotyped if for black geeks it would get stereotyped hey you're you're trying to be white blah 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 and that's one of the most toxic things that we ever had to hear because Mm -hmm. black people like anime too black (laughs) people like this um and that's why another shout out um the person that's going to be at huntsville is blurred over he specifically shows people of color into the geek community hey we cosplay this we want to do that it doesn't matter we all like anime like all because we're black does not mean we don't like these things right so you probably shouldn't stereotype us just because you assume black people are only this type of thing right that societal bs that we always live by um but i grew up liking metal yeah like look where i live (laughs) um like it doesn't matter, but I grew up listening to rock, listening to metal. My dad listened to Tupac and um, Biggie, that type of thing. My mom listened to country and Prince. Yeah. And then you got me. So, <laughs> it's just like so. Do my own thing. Funny, funny joke. Um, I was listening in high school a band called Seven Dust. Okay. And um, I had this kid come up to me and go like, "Hey, why you listen? Why you listen to that music?" That's such a white thing to do. Funny thing about that, Seven Dust is a band that has a black singer. Wow. And he didn't so, even know. <laughs> it's like, I had that, like, monkey meme, just like. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, did okay. you, like, educate okay. him, or you just kind of just let him. It just, back then, it's just like, it's a waste of energy. It's Usually like, is. Yeah, I probably would have done the same thing. <laughs> but, like, that's something I dealt with from, like, any anybody it didn't matter what race it was because if you had people from that side they would judge you because they think you're trying to be white right um then you have white people that they think they have their tokenized friend because he listens to metal right and i'm like i didn't want to be part of that yeah i'm almost i'm like pushing both sides i'm like i'm black no matter what i'm doing yeah like know me for my character it's like you didn't listen to mlk judge the person based on their character not right. by the color of their skin yeah, right i always have that quote in my head and i always <laughs> treat people accordingly right and even in the times now it's a little hostile you know mm. and i don't like that because what's going on now and what happened just yesterday now you're gonna get that bs happening to asian americans yeah and we have to be as a society better not pointing the finger at any race is like no these people were a piece of shit yeah we there is a systematic thing that we deal with but everyone's capable of being a piece of shit yeah. and we need to treat people accordingly yeah. i'm not gonna and we deal with that all the time yeah so like what you like don't be a dick <laughs> <laughs> in essence you know that's pretty yeah, much what it's all about be a short terminology of that just don't be a dick word well I appreciate you man I appreciate your authenticity your bravery to always be yourself I think that's something we need to see more of and champion more in people so um yeah yeah um with my art I I do not do anything political at all I like um, that um <laughs> Because I have, we, all of us have to deal with it in some aspect. And so in the art world, I don't care what side you're on. Just don't be an asshole. Yeah. Just like art for art. Yeah. You know? And that's, that's really big. I feel like these days where like politi- everything is just political. Like, like movies, right. and so every, like, like every have, second you have to like. So like I said, I have people that make like, like Black Lives Matter or just anything political. Right. I had people idiotically wanting me to make an art piece of Donald Trump. Yeah, and I'm like, so one, I don't make anything political. Two, 
as a black man, out of all things <laughs> you want me to make, that is not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, well, you can grab, go buy some beads and, you know. Right. <laughs> do it yourself. You yeah, know? pretty much. Um, yeah, but I don't think art. You have the. I have a choice to have it political or not, but I just choose not to because I don't want it for. Like I said, I want it for everybody. Yeah, and I feel like you know people may like look down on that, be like, "Oh, you're not serious or you're not like addressing real problems." But I feel like why I'm, do I need to address real problems? It's like is not going to change the world. It's I'm not. I'm like, bro, we we you we are here this twenty four seven. I anyway. did my job. I went out and vote. I <laughs> do what I need to do out there. Right. Like I'm. When I do art stuff, the only thing, it's not political. It's just, like, I want everyone to be accepted. So I've made stuff. <laughs> um, I made, like, pride stuff when I would do the pride shows. Right. Like, I made, like, this rainbow unicorn. It was on a 15 by 30. Hmm. This is the 18 by 24, so it was tall. <laughs> I made a whole bunch of stuff. Like, I'm for everybody. Yeah. And I love everyone equally. Right. And most of the artists that I hang around with are of all cultures. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, it's kind of a double standard, right? Because it's like, I feel like everybody is, like, openly consumes black art all the time. But it's like when you said you were black and you want to consume, like, another type of art that's not really associated with black people. It's like, well, I mean, all type of people listen to hip-hop and, you know, all type of people yeah. watch. So, like, what's that about? It's just a, it, it, there's, there's a difference between social bases, like social common sense versus like what people like. I'm human being, each of the things I like, it just so happens that this person of this ethnicity and blah, 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 blah. Uh, I just like it because I like it. Yeah. So <laughs> who cares? No. Um, yeah, I, I can definitely relate to that. I don't think I, like growing up, I wanted to be like, see, I felt I was, I eventually ended up just playing sports and like basketball and stuff, but like when I was really little, I always wanted to be like a crocodile hunter. Like I would go outside right. and like see like, and I'll get really into animals and shit. But I just remember like being pressured into like, like, like that's not what you like, do. It's <laughs> the, yeah, it's the parasocial ethnicity problem mm. that we have. It's just like because this is how society has said this is how we are and this is what we're into, and what we grew up on and what our parents grew up on. You just kind of like anything outside of those parameters. The people like see it as weird people but it's not being shit. weird it's just being yourself it's it's there's one side where you're being proud of your ethnicity and there's one side being proud of your individualism mm. and some of us decline being an individual because there's these priorities of what we need to be as an ethnicity and mm. I'm like I'm always going to be my ethnicity that's not going to change right. but my individual I can be all these things I'm dressed like this. I have these likes and preferences. It doesn't diminish anything of my blackness. Right. Like, at the end of the day, I'm still black. That doesn't change. It's just how I was born. And you shouldn't disrespect me or treat me or think I'm, like, belittling my own culture just because, like, I don't play the norms. Right. That's dope. I appreciate it. I want to end it on that. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Support my man Bebop and other cool individuals stepping out and doing their own thing because that's what makes the world cool and diverse and awesome. And uh, Bebop, I appreciate you being on the podcast, man. All right. Yeah. Um, I will bring out that one piece oh, yeah. so everyone can see it. We're going to show the big canvas of the Mario map, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's so the big boy. Stay tuned for that. We out. <laughs> Mario. <laughs> like a little sound effect. Over 30. Like Thousand beads. Thirty thousand beads, you say? Yeah. Crazy. Let me zoom in. That's crazy. Insanity. Dedication. This reminds me of like the Pokemon map, like the eight bit. That's what you're saying? Yeah. Cause I wasn't much into Mario, but I played the shit out of some Pokemon, so that's what this reminds me of. I miss those uh, cartridges days. Yeah. Let me hit that dope. 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 Smoke. I need it. I really need it.